been so inspiring to me. I'm just so jazzed to come here every year. Always going home, just energized and so excited about chiropractic. And I just want to get my hands on people already. They did good last year, but they surpassed themselves this year. You have got to come. I love the wave. It's been a great seminar, meeting up with old friends and catching up and learning a lot and being re-inspired. <laughs>
So Dan, uh, you can start if you'll if you'll share that, and and then Sue, I'll go right on to you with it. My story is notorious, and by the way, it's um it's in here. So I'm assuming that everyone has this, but this we I had opportunity to write a little bit about my history and the memories. If anyone wants to reminisce, read Life West at 40 years. You'll see the little blur by me, and I pretty much say it all in there. But just in in a nutshell. I was hired with a phone call from uh, Dr. Jerry Kahn, who was on the meeting tonight. And it was in the, the fall of 1981, it was my fourth year of clinical practice. And as I say in the little thing, he took a big chance on me because I was pretty much untested. And I, I started the next year, 1982. He actually had me start teaching radiology. This before there was a board certified chiropractic radiologist on campus. So, I, my, my position has changed a lot over these decades. I tell people I'm right on the cusp of 40 years. But the, the, the real background story, though, everyone knows that story. I say it at every seminar, how Dr. Jerry Klum changed my life and how one phone call can really change one's life because mine really did. But the, the back story that no one knows is that when he hired me, I, my first day on campus was a, a Friday. And what I did is I, had, I was driving a little Subaru Grat pickup I put an adjusting table in it. I drove out to, to, to the San Lorenzo camp, campus and I had a couple kids that I just hustled, put it, the adjusting table into the quad. And so there's a quad there and I just sat at the end of the table and I, these kids would come by and I just looked at this one alpha guy and I said, when's the last time you've been checked by a chiropractor? And he goes, well, whatever. I go, do you want to get checked and maybe work on it? He goes, sure, why not? So I checked the guy, worked him, whipped the magic on him. He's with a buddy. And, and I said, how about you? And he goes, same thing. He goes, I, you know, and I checked him with the magic on him. Both guys became lifelong friends. Um, and, but what was interesting is what guys, that people started lining up. That afternoon, I adjusted nearly the entire campus in the quad. No one knew who I was. And the first guy said to the second guy, who, who the heck is that guy? And the other guy goes, I have, I have no idea. And then the next day was my first day on campus and everyone knew who I was. He says, I was that guy that adjusted everyone in the quad the afternoon before because Thursday was my afternoon off. And that's what I did the day before I started at Life West. I went to the quad and adjusted the entire campus as much as I could. <laughs> Great way to introduce yourself to the campus, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I love it. I love it. Sue, how about you? How did you find Life West or Life West find you, however that happened? Well, you decide here. I was teaching in uh, San Francisco City College, and I shared a desk for years with someone who founded the anatomy program, Peggy Phillips. She was the uh, uh, division chair, and uh, I worked there by day. And she worked at night, and years went by, and we never met. And then something changed, and we crossed paths and uh, had a long conversation. She asked me if I would be interested in coming over to this college that was just kind of like getting started, uh, and would I be interested in developing curricula? And all my teaching experience prior to that, the curricula was set. And so, I mean, what do you do with that? There's no room for creativity. You just kind of come in like a robot. So I thought, oh, this is really cool. And when I came to Life West and interviewed, who did I meet? I met Jim Hawkins and Marie Smith and Dr. Jerry Klum and all of these people who just, I mean, I was just totally enamored. I was enthralled with the people I was meeting. And there also there was Ron Quinta. I, I wonder if he's out there and how he's doing these days. But uh, I went over thinking I was going to teach like a part-time load and teach one class. And they said, well, could you teach this? And I said, well, I suppose so. And how about that? And I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool. And the next thing you know, I had like a full-time load and two full-time jobs. And I had to make a decision. Which track was I going to stay? I was on a full-time tenure track with City College. Or was I going to go with this new thing, completely new thing? I didn't know a thing about chiropractic, right? Was I going to give this a try? And I don't know if you're out there, Warren Vale, but it was Warren Vale in my very, very first class. He took me out in the San Lorenzo campus in that little quad area. We stood underneath the blossoming cherry trees. 
It was a beautiful spring day. And he told me why he wanted to become a doctor of chiropractic. And that was it. That was it. I thought, oh my gosh, this is a wonderful thing. And so, of course, you know, I've been there ever since. That is amazing, amazing. And and I want our viewers and, and our listeners and viewers, and please send questions in because we're gonna we're, we can interrupt us at any time to be able to get your questions answered, right? Because this is an interactive evening. Um, I, I have to tell tell the audience this that that you know we have an outstanding faculty, and and a lot of our faculty have been around for 30 plus years, and you know just like the two of them, and um, and even our younger faculty, they've they great footsteps to follow. But every quarter, I get two emails usually. Well, every other. Dan is every other, and Sue, you're usually every quarter. I get an email with pictures. And I don't know why the two of you, but you know, they have their classes draw pictures and do different things. And then Sue will say, look and see what my class did this quarter, right? And Dan, you'll usually come down and show them to me, right? Because we usually see each other at break on Monday morning. And yeah. say, look at these. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And, you know. You're, the pedagogy that you use to teach, you know, to really cement it in their in their minds and just in their being, you know, in their cells is incredible. But it's just so interesting, the, the analogy between both of you, you know, doing that. It's just so cool. Um, let's talk about this. I want to just kind of ask you, because you were both at the old school. So you were at, you know, you both were at, at, at San Leandro, at Via Barrett, right? And you saw all the transformation that took place to the different schools that was there. You know, what was it like to teach there? Because obviously it was a different school, right? And, you know, different than where we're at now and what we have going on. So what was it like, Sue? What Give us your, your feeling, and Dan, I'm going to ask you the same question. Well, you know, it's obviously very, very different because, as I was mentioning to you earlier, we were starting out with a chalkboard and chalk, and we thought we'd really moved up in the world when we acquired the Bayview campus. We had whiteboards and, and dry erase markers, you know. I mean, we really, myself especially, were not, you know, computer types. I, I can remember thinking that I, I didn't know if I actually wanted to use a computer, and uh, Dr. Jerry Klum told me, and no one certain terms I was gonna miss the bus if I didn't learn how to use one so you know it was a, a really different it had its charm we had uh, you know very small intimate classes uh, we knew each other on a first name basis and it was it was a precious thing it, it's just very different now compared to how it was and each move and I think the brilliance of the leadership there has always been an effort on the part of Life West leadership to hook us all into something big, always much greater than the small self, a, a big, brilliant future. So all of the moves have been, you know, very, very progressive, but, but not to lose the charm of the individual, the history and the individual stages. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Dan, how about you going from, you know, the, the 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 middle school right or junior high school in San Leandro over to here and we stopped in other places too right Bayview and then the clinic and what was it like? Well, the fact of it is the the original campus was for little kids. It was a little kid campus <laughs> and we fit into it. So the most funny thing was, of course, the bathrooms. They were little kid. You know, I don't know how I've never been in the 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 female bathroom, but. For the men, little teeny urinals, way, I mean, everything <laughs> seems that were way down, you know, to wash your hands because little kids had access. And, and so that that was who. And then the, the fact that the back of the place had these burrowing ground owls that my kids were just completely enthralled with. That was a lot of fun. But my, my absolute best memory of the old campus before moving over is that there was a basketball rim in the cafeteria. And I just loved playing hoop. It drove, it drove Dr. Clum nuts because it was so noisy. And his office was just across the hall from that. And sure he, enough. He was getting to play like crazy, but it was so much fun. And so we played it. And then one day he took the rim down, and we were all really pretty ticked off about that. And that, that same room doubled as bingo. Finances were tight enough in the olden days that part of the, the revenue for the college was hosting bingo in that same room. And I did a lot of continuing ed back then on campus. And then when I would walk out of there on a Sunday afternoon, I'd walk right past the uh, 
the auditorium there, the, the cafeteria, and see all of these very unhealthy people like smokers and neck collars that were just hanging out there and they were just like regulars. I mean, 10 years later, the same guy with the same neck collar was wearing that same neck collar. I mean, just, but it was just, it was kind of fun to see all that. And then, and then Dr. Clem transitioned us over to the campus we have now eventually in 2000. And that place was literally put together to be a, a college. And so the rooms were put together as a college. I mean, and it's, and it's grown even since then, as we've got now the, our own gym there and, and the big auditorium room and all these things. It's transitioned over the years. But of course, my favorite room on campus always is the library. And so the library at LifeWest, it ended up being the biggest room on campus. It was so <laughs> awesome to me. I was just so awestruck going into that library and say, this is a real school library now all of a sudden. And since that's kind of where I live and die, it's where my, all my interest is, is in that library. I just was so thrilled to, mm -hmm. to have that library um, and to get out of the little kid campus in San Lorenzo and into our current campus in Hayward. I love it. I love it. You know, it's interesting because you talk about that room, you know, where the bingo was and where the basketball hoop was. That was the cafeteria. Yes. And it was the auditorium. And it was the gymnasium. It was everything. It was a true yeah. multi-purpose room, right? You know, sure. it's great. Hey, we've got questions that are that are coming in. So Shane, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. And if you want to share the questions, let's go for it. First question comes from Dr. David Shiner. Dr. David Shiner, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, the question, hey, uh, Dr. Murphy and Dr. Ray, the question is really for both of you. What what do you say is the number one thing that Life West has given to you, provided for you? So you want to go or you're, you know? Oh, I'm sure. A, I'll take that one. Um, for me, I think the thing has been I love to learn. And so uh, the, I don't know, the Life West student has come up with some of the most unique questions because I do have history teaching in other institutions. I have to say that the LifeWest student has the creative mind and looks at things differently so that it has always challenged me to go back and learn more and I love it. It's, it's just the most stimulating environment one would ever want to find. That's and I great. appreciate it so much. Dan, how about you? You know, when I started at LifeWest, um, I was really green. I was I was already a good chiropractor, but I was really green. Life West, what it gave to me was opportunity, and and I I ran with it longer and harder than I ever could have imagined. The opportunity to teach and to refine my skills, and then to do postgraduate continuing education classes, and like Sue said, this gives me an outlet. I've always wanted to know more than everyone else, but you get kind of you get all this knowledge pent up in you, and you need an outlet. And LifeWest gave me the outlet, so it's like I, I cannot even imagine what my life would be like absent LifeWest and those opportunities that the college gave me and still do through today. But what what I the opportunities I get, I mean, last night I wasn't on with you guys because I did a class in in Ottawa, Canada, and you know, and I had a whole bunch of chiropractors on. I mean, all of those opportunities really centered around um, what LifeWest has given to me. And then, of course, like always, I, I'm looking at the 40-year thing, and I was thrilled to see um, Barbara at the very bottom, the librarian, because um, she is, without a doubt, my best friend on campus because she helps me get studies. Almost every week, she's helping me get studies. Michelle gets me a lot of studies, but we, get, we go through so many studies and try to figure out how the best thing about being a chiropractor really is that you can never figure it out. No matter what, there's more stuff to learn. You can get better. You're a better clinician. You're more intuitive. Everything is exciting all the time. And so the the, the opportunity to have contact with a with a real library, a library that can get me any study on the planet or a book or anything, and just the resources there that are just unprecedented for people that are in the trench field practitioners. I do in the trench field practitioner stuff, but I get to do all of this other stuff only because of my association with Life Care Protocols West. It's been the mm -hmm. best thing. And, I, and I'm, I'm not even, I still have a peak. I guarantee I'm not peak. I'm <laughs> still, it's, 40, it's 40, 43 years now as a chiropractor, and I still haven't peaked. And what's really fun is I'm getting polygenerational students, students that I had decades ago. I've now got their kids 
go yeah. to the program. Yes. That's really, yes. Uh, who's Molly generates well, you know, so pretty quick. I'm, I know I'm going to get a third generation pretty quick. So that'd be pretty <laughs> You will. Both of you will. I guarantee it because I'm keeping you around. Shane, what else we have? That segues perfectly into our next question from Edward Harriet. How much has the content of what you teach changed over the years? Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, we hit the World Wide Web, the Internet. We have Google Scholar. We have access to PubMed at our fingertips, the click of a mouse. It's, it's terminal overwhelm. But uh, for I speak for both myself and Dan, I'm sure uh, we're eating it up. Um, the information that is available now is, is just amazing. So for those of us who enjoy uh, feasting on it, it's, it's great. It's a little bit challenging in terms of knowing how to limit that relative to our students. And I think Dr. Oberstein says it best. And he's holding the reins on me because I can be a motor mouth in the classroom. He calls it fire hose education because it, it really is. We've got, there's just so much information. And I think the majority of us want to deliver as much of it as we can. But at the same time, we have to recognize that the student is out there getting it from all of us all day long. and. You know, that's the thing we have to kind of try to control a little of it. But uh, I think that the information has grown to favor chiropractic more than ever, because now everybody's on the same page in terms of understanding that all the diseases that we're facing, I mean, we're really facing now are due to lifestyle, multiple risk factors, and everybody's coming together on the same page. We need to be proactive we need to be preventative in our approach to them so it's very very different from how you know starting out we would look at well this is the name of this and this is the name of that and now you know it's all come alive so it's a very very exciting time it's never been as exciting as it is now to teach great great dan how about you the content of my classes has changed drastically over the last 39 years in the beginning it was x-ray and then I moved into technique and then I moved into clinical management and um, the clinical management, I mean, I was so busy in the olden days that in my personal clinical practice that I would just run to the campus and I would just bring the x-rays from the, the patient that morning. I'd stick them up on the view box, say, this is what came in today. This is the, the history. This is exam. This is the film. This is my plan. And, you know, and I would give them updates. And that was a lot of fun, with very little prep. My, my, I've transitioned very much differently now, in part because of Sue Ray and in part because of Jim Hawkins. And I'm doing an interactive drawing class. And I did that because when I took the carrot class, you realize that if you can engage cerebellum, mm -hmm. you can engage cerebellar plasticity, which then supersummates both the hippocampal and neocortical loops. And so the result is, I, when you do this interactive drawing class, it can, takes a lot of what they've had from other places and it kind of puts it together and makes sense. For example, the, the drawing we just did this week, we did a drawing on headache. And so I do a drawing on headache and I am not allowed, my commitment to me and to the students, I can't put a line on the, on the page unless I have a PubMed study that supports it. And so we do it and then we send them the PubMed studies and they look at it so they know it's the real thing. These are things that were unheard of 40 years ago. But the result is we are coming up with a product out of the college that has never before been seen. These are the most prepared chiropractors in, in the history of planet Earth. And yes. I, I hang out at other facilities and, and they, I don't think they have the same commitment often that some of our faculty do. And I mean, I don't want to badmouth anyone, but I just look at the differences in, in their perspective and the differences in their understanding to realize that the same release for headache or the same release for temporal mandibular joint the same relay for otitis media, the same relays for Meniere's disease, the same relays for tinnitus, they're all together. And I've studied that would amalgamate all of those and just show them and not only how it works, but then, okay, how will we manage it now as a chiropractor? We got this. What are we gonna do with it? What are we gonna do with our hands? What is our, what is our approach? Mm. So being able to put all of those facets together in the modern era, which is so different than 40 years ago, I think has done nothing but improve the quality of chiropractic education. Now, I couldn't be more happy, and I know Sue's the same, and Ron, you too, I could be happier with the product that's coming out of the college now. They're, they're, they're really spectacular, and it's really gratifying um, to see such um, 
So it's fine young chiropractors coming out of the facility. So absolutely, and I, and I want to share something with both of you and with all, with our whole audience. You know, I'm 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 on the road quite a bit, and when I'm on the road and we're doing president receptions, we always have you know students who've been out for you know one year, two year, three years, and they're they're always coming to these, right? And so I always ask them the same question. You know, I talk to them, but I, one question in particular I ask is, how well did life was prepare you? Now, when they're in school, they have no idea because they have nothing to judge it to, right? They they think, oh, I should have got more of this, I should have got more, but they've never been out in practice, right? So you're kind of putting someone together and then throwing them on the field. And they, they haven't seen how their product can actually work. Everyone says the same thing. And I think you both will relate to this. They all say, wow, they over prepared us. And I go, well, what does that mean? And they go, well, you know what? What we learn, I mean, 95% of what we see or 98% of what we see in our office is like, you know, subluxations and this and that, da, da, da. but when that person walks in that has that whatever it is, boom, I got it. And if I don't have it, I'm somewhere near to where it has to go and I can go back to my notes from Murphy's class and from Sue Ray's class and from Norm Strutton's class and I can pick it out and I can find it. And you know what, we all know that in education, it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared, right? Actually in life, right? So that is a testament to how you guys teach and where our faculty's at. And Dan, with what you said, it's just incredible. I mean, when you talk to these students once they're gone, right? And they really see what we did for them, right? Shane, what else you have? Next one comes from Dr. Annette Walker. Please share your thoughts about advancing the profession, the call to action for diversity and inclusion in all aspects. I'm on the DNI committee, so I guess I have to say something here. I, I feel really, really fortunate that I get to work with the people that I do uh, by participating in the diversity and inclusivity committee. They're not the people that uh, I, I would ordinarily hang out with in the course of the day and I have to say that our campus is incredibly supportive so that as we're reaching out with recruitment and and so on I can say with all confidence that the new people coming in will feel comfortable they will feel welcome they will feel that their voice is heard and so uh, I think that is a, a very, very unique aspect that we have because for one thing, we're in this culture of the Bay Area. Uh, some people would say, well, where is Hayward, California on the map? And I would say, you know, it's really, it is the heart of California. I listened to Gavin Newsom speak the other night and his vision for the state of California is to bring everybody forward, is to look at inequities, injustices, and bring everybody to the table. And that's how I feel it is at LifeWest right now. We don't have to create this movement. It exists already that everybody is uh, equally seated at the table and always has been. Beautiful. Dan, how about you? You know, I would say ditto to that, exactly that. Um, of course, I'm a lot different than Sue in that I'm part-time faculty. I blow in there, do the job, and blow out within just a very, very narrow. I don't even know anyone on campus. I know Sue because she's been there for so long. I know you because we've been friends for decades. But and I know a few that that cut teeth in my office. Um, but other than that, I really don't know anyone. So I just kind of blow in and blow out of there. But everything that Sue said, it just seems like, yeah, ditto. It seems like that's just the way our facility is. With, without question, everyone is equal. And over 39 years, I mean, you've seen the change. I mean, obviously, we go back 39 years for both of you, it was male dominated, wasn't it? And, and you know, probably 80% male to 20% female at one point right. when I was in school, you know, and then it started changing. And now we're seeing more people of color and we're seeing more ethnicities. And it's just, it's just incredible. It's so beautiful as we start to see chiropractic grow into society, right? And, yeah, and that's that's really a credit to you, Ron, because you're you're the recruiter, to, to be honest. You're the one out there that's doing the president receptions all over the country and all over all over multi countries. That you're doing that in the group that you're bringing in. Because I look at my classroom right now, and it is so diverse. It's it's um, it's unbelievable. Um, way different than it was 40 years ago. Completely different than 40 years ago. Yeah, and 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 Dan, as much as I'd like to take credit for that, I can't. 
you know, because Jerry laid the foundation and then Brian laid the foundation. And so we're picking up. But one thing we are doing right now, which I'm so proud of, and, and Dr. Annette Walker, who asked that question, is, you know, she's she's leading it. And Sue, you are on the committee, is we put a lot of energy and a lot of effort into into diversity, inclusion and equity. And and we want to and we're keeping going. We're, we're going to keep this going forever. You, we're never going to arrive, but we're we, I hope we never arrive because there's always more to learn. But we are putting the energy. We're putting the work in and uh, and, and it's showing. So I, I, like you said, I can see it. You know, it is showing. So thank you both for your answers. Um, Shane, anything else on your side? This one comes from our student athletic coordinator, Nolan Haverson. Question for both. Why do you love chiropractic? Great question. Dan, you hit that first. Sue's been going first. I'll let her think for a minute. Well, my family history is my mother's cancer, diagnosed with bronchogenic carcinoma, stage four, age 44, given a very grim prognosis, um, uh, less than a year to live. And my mom did alternative. And all of a sudden, I became a, aware of the fact that there is a non-pharmacological approach to healthcare. My mom did that. She lived 26 years with cancer, dying at age 70 of cancer. But you start thinking, whoa, and just the understanding. And then once I started chiropractic, and everything I do now, it's about innate intelligence. The innate intelligence, just the things that we did with my class this week. For example, just looking at this. I don't know how many have seen this book, which was one of the books we did this week. Brand new book about how environmental toxins are completely trashing the neuroendocrine system. This to me is against innate intelligence, and I think therefore it's a pass out of chiropractic. And so this is what excites me about chiropractic is just understanding how the body works and how it works it, it, with respect to universal intelligence, what's going on in the environment, and all the things that we can do as providers of healthcare so that people can um, have choices. I, I am anti thinking that there is a drug for every problem. I think that's not true. I think that drugs are often the problem. If you ever want to see the study, read Charles Kilo from the Journal of the American Medical Association. Read the Kilo study. It is stunning the damage that pharmacologically based healthcare causes when you think everyone needs a drug. They don't. What they need is a healthy lifestyle, which is the way Sue started this. You need a healthier lifestyle. So coaching people on that um, I think is really exciting for me as a chiropractor, and that's what I like about chiropractic. I like the unique thinking. I like the fact that we can help people that are turning to us for a last resort of help. They've been to everyone else, and they're not coming around, and they come to us, and we can help them often so much, and there's no feeling like that on planet Earth. And so you think that your, your, your life is meaningful, that it has purpose um, when you can help people, and, and it's, it's addicting. It's, it's like my personal dopamine just to be able to help people and um, uh, and never look back. I mean, like I said, I'm more excited about being a chiropractor now 40, 43 years in um, than when I started just because I've seen so much more, I know so much more, and I just don't see any of my, the only regret I have is that one day I will die, you know, in another 100 years from now or whatever, but I mean, I'm so excited about all these things we get to do and how many people we get to help. I just, it would, would it's a shame that we can't do it forever, but we, you know, life is finite, so we do the best we can for the time that we have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sue, how about you? Well, all I can say is I can't imagine any place else in the world where you could teach with faculty member who would jump up with enthusiasm, jump, leap, leap up on a table in order to make a point. And that is, that's Dan Murphy all the way, you know. And so, I mean, how can you compete with something like that? But myself, I'm a very physical and mechanical person. Uh, the idea of what chiropractors do makes total sense to me. And I love the fact that there can be people walking down the street and you can go up to them and you can say I believe I can help you I believe I can help you with your walk I believe I can help you tie your shoe with greater ease you know these really really basic things but people are in pain people have suffering they have a lack of flexibility they don't have the knowledge about a good diet and how they don't have to rely on medications they can have a life free of drugs and and so on and so forth and I am inspired by the younger generation coming in. 
I am inspired just like the, the day I was talking about at the beginning of this uh, webinar was what inspired me then inspires me now. I hear students come in and they talk to me about what it is that they want to do with their lives. And I believe that I can help them to get there. And it just makes me so happy. I just have butterflies and my heart goes pity pat. And it's just, it's a, a blessing. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be able to participate in, in a movement like this. Yeah, I love it. I, and you know something I have to tell both of you, and you know this, you know, the amount of people that you have taken care of over the last, you know, 35 to 40 years through the students that you have taught is mind boggling when you think about that, right? You know, that, that your teaching enabled the student to tag into something, to go out and go forth and serve and to give, to do, to love and to serve and lasting purpose. And, you know, you're part of that product. And it's what a, that is the beauty of teaching, isn't it? Truly, you know, the, the reward, the greatest reward is watching them go out and do that. Uh, we should pay you for the opportunity. Well, I'll tell you what, that's on tape, and uh, <laughs> I won't tell you about the checks that Dan walks in, Michelle and Dan, they drop a check off every other week. I won't tell you about that, but anyways, Shane, you have a comment from somebody, is that correct? I sure do. This one comes from Wanda Butterly. I don't have a question as much as I want to say hi and send my love to both Sue and Dan, whom I worked oh. with for 32 years at Life West. Hey, Wanda. Magic Wanda. There you go. And you, we all know that Wanda, you know, especially at the, you know, my, my vision of Wanda, and I would only come up and lecture or do whatever, but she was always pushing that AV cart. There was always equipment on there, overhead projectors back in the old day, right? All that stuff and anything you needed, Wanda was just, you know, right there to get it for you. You know, she was just absolutely wonderful. So hi, Wanda. I uh, trust you're having a great evening uh, tonight listening to us. Let me jump in and ask you guys something, because you know, you've been in the classroom for so many years. And when you're in the classroom or in any job that someone does, whatever it is, you know, um, what was like one of the craziest things that happened to you while you were in the classroom? Like, you know, the crazy story that you've got to say, no one's gonna believe this, right? You know, Sue, what was yours? Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I have a fondness for owls. And as it comes to pass, I was teaching a regional anatomy class at the the old campus, the old, old campus. And the anatomy lab was an old um, gym locker. And it was a changing room for whatever sports activities they had out there. And the uh, screen door didn't shut all the way. And in fact, we probably should have closed it, but we just kind of let it go. It was open, it was slightly ajar. And uh, one of those burrowing owls flew in to the anatomy lab. And it was a small group. We probably had like 10, 11 people standing around the gurney, right? We're all learning anatomy around this cadaver. And this burrowing owl flew in the door, made two complete swoops around us and then left. And we were breathless with the experience. I could never do justice. That's why I have my friend Owl here. <laughs> but it's just, it's totally unbelievable. I wonder if anybody is out there tonight who remembers that experience. Polly Cooper, who else was a student there? Well, uh, the names escape me, but that was, that's my, that's my best memory ever. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Dan, how about you? What was one of those moments that just kind of like... Man, I don't have any good stories like that. That's a good story. <laughs> my, my best I memory was that I ne never get out of my head. Daughter Danielle was born on a Sunday night about 6.30 p.m. Then Mondays are college day. So for all of these decades, Monday is college day, including, you know, right now. And so next morning, Monday, I have a 12 hour baby and I brought her into campus. And I wow. showed her to my class, I go, brand new baby, born last night, let me show you how we look at babies. And so, cause you know, I know you're gonna have Claudia Anrig on and stuff, I think maybe tomorrow, um, you know, the pediatric guru out of Fresno and that, you know, we were already looking at kids. And so Danielle now is 34 years of age 
and with her own child. And it's interesting that both of my daughters, if you add up their ages, and I know, Ron, you, you, you're above me on this, but uh, my daughters, um, 23 and 34, so I have 77 years worth of daughters, and they've, they've never been an allopathic provider. They're completely healthy. They're completely normal in every way. Um, uh, Danielle was college valedictorian. Candace was a 4.0 straight academic scholarship. I uh, nominated for, for a valedictorian to get it, but the point of it is, there's something about this lifestyle I think that is really different. And the fact that I had the opportunity in, to bring a 12-hour baby that I delivered. I, both kids are born at home. So I, I, one of the few dads that could say, other than this audience, that they delivered their own kids. So I was able to deliver both kids at home and then brought Danielle in the, the very next day to the old campus. It was, you know, back back at the San Lorenzo campus 34 years ago. Well, Dan, that beats wow. my story. I'll tell you that, man, because uh, the craziest I have around the kids was when my second daughter was born. My first daughter, uh, Lauren, wanted to take the placenta to school for show and tell. Oh. And we went, and we went, oh no, they already think we're the Adams family. We don't want them to think like we're that. So she ended up taking the umbilical, Mary gave her the umbilical cord and she took it in a plastic bag and all of her classmates got to touch it. And then uh, and when, and when I picked her up at school, cause Mary just had a baby, right? I picked her up at school, the teacher came up to me and said, that was incredible. And I said, well, yeah. that was calmed down because she wanted to bring the placenta. Her eyes just went like this. But Dan, bringing a 12 hour baby, I cannot beat that. That's just, that's crazy. That's just crazy. Um, Let's, I, I think, you know, when we hit that time period where we're gonna, where it's time to kind of wrap up, I do want to ask you both a question that I think is really important. And then, um, yeah, this is important. I, you know, I, I want to ask you that, you know, in 40 years from now, you know, when you're uh, sitting on the rocking chair, you know, doing what you're doing, Sue and I will be watching the University of Michigan games. Dan, you'll be a, a Raider fan for life, you know, no matter what city they're in. When you look back, what would be the one thing that you kind of say, man, if I only would have, you know, um, you know, when it, when we talk about being in the classroom, talk about teaching these these leaders who are out there right now, you know, how would you look back or what would not even not, maybe not even in, you know, if I only would have. But but what about like, you know, wow, that's what I did, you know, that kind of thing. What would it be? Sue, what would you how would you answer that? Well, you know, I'm going to have to tell you that uh, one of my um, trepidations is speaking in public. I just can't seem to do enough of it. And I think that you have been a tremendously positive influence in that regard because I've had to speak in front of you <laughs> at a couple of graduation dinners and uh, you notice my twitching foot or my shaking leg or any of these things, and you've always been so encouraging. And I think now what I would say is, uh, you know, I, I should have more courage. I, I'm sorry I haven't had more courage. Well, I, I, Sue, I think our audience needs to know this, that Sue got on stage in front of the whole school and did a rap. She came on with a baggy <laughs> pants, a big shirt, with a beanie on and did a rap about Dave Straub. And it was it was incredible because you guys had a competition whenever you were the finalist and they had a rap off. And it was incredible. So to hear that 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 the shyness or the or the trepidation, you know, that just kind of goes like this for me. But but uh you're just incredible. It was just incredible. Dan, how about yourself? Well I I think that the um, the thing I want to do the most is often the hardest thing for me to do, and that is I I want to be a flawless, literally flawless role model for every student on campus. Mm -hmm. When I say goodbye to them, I give each one of them my business card and say, stuff's going to come up in your life, call me and uh, just run it past me. And if you don't want to talk to me, talk to Michelle because she looks at things a lot different because she's, she's in the trenches now for 36 years as a chiropractor. And uh, I go, just just call. But, to, you know, I think about, you know, times when I um, I disappointed myself by not being the role, role model that I wanted to be. So we, we talk about sleep hygiene, about diet, about exercise, about chiropractic, about mechanical care in a gravity environment, and all the things that I think are important and relevant. And then 
you it's weird how I you, you kind of concentrate on the few times when you when you cave on on the on the message that you preach. I'm pretty good. I'm a ninety percenter, but I, I strive to be a hundred percenter and, and that's mm -hmm. um I, on campus, I want to be that role model. I want to be the most energetic, the most on time, the most, you know, prepared, the most in, stick along, around the longest afterwards. I handle every single question to the last kid leaves, it kind of thing. I want to make sure that uh, that I that I that I do that. And sometimes I can't because I got a blow off or this or that. Or sometimes I'll eat some junk food, um, which I think I think must put myself for later. But yeah. Don't tell anyone. But you know, Ron, because we've been partying together overseas, and everyone ate the crap but me and Michelle. I mean, we are, we have, you know, and if I would have caved, I wanted to cave. If I would have caved, I would have regretted it. But I held the line, so I'm proud of myself. And I, I just, that's, yeah, I want to, I want to be the best role model possible for all of the students that go through the, the program, as well as for our family and for our patients as well. And, and I, and I want to say this that I think you both have reached that. I really mean it. You know, our students walk out and, you know, they, they Sue, they just rave about you and they just, they rave, about, even today at the, at the party we had today, we had a, you know, the student council threw a thing today, you know, with coffee and, and cupcakes and stuff like that. And they were giving out different swag. And uh, I got one here at a koozie, one of these new 40 year anniversary koozies and all kinds of stuff. And People were talking about you, Sue. I'd, I'd say to them, how school? Oh my God, I got Sue Ray and it's incredible. That I, and Dan, same thing, man. It's like, you know, you, you, everyone can't wait to get in your class. In fact, people come to it twice, you know, and they wait six months out to just sit, stand in the back, you know, of the, of the spa and just hear you because they love what you both have to teach. And, and I want to just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I think that our audience needs to know this. We know that Dan, travels all over the world. We were just last, right before COVID or like when it was in November, you know, we, we had an entourage and we went to Israel and lectured to the Israeli uh, Chiropractic Society. We were in London lecturing there. And, you know, Dan's all over the world sharing chiropractic and the knowledge that he has and life West. And Sue, not many people know this, you know, you know, though you're not a chiropractor, going to Africa to do a service trip, right? And being with the people that you were with, I believe it was Africa when you came back, you told me that, right? And yes. I mean, came back and was just in awe of all these things that took place and just spreading chiropractic and supporting the people that are there. That's what a Life West you know, leader does, right? And I just wanna thank both of you for being leaders, for being steadfast in what you do and for being with us. And I want you to know that um, I've got contracts for both of you for the next 30 years. So <laughs> whatever we need to do, I don't care. I, motorized carts, you name it, we're gonna make sure it happens, all right? Uh, anyways, listen, I wanna ask you if you have any last final words and then we're gonna wrap up tonight. Uh, Sue, anything you'd like to share with, share with our audience tonight? Well, I just uh, have the utmost appreciation for being invited to do this. Uh, I am here tonight in the best of company that I could possibly have. So uh, just thank you very much. Okay, you're, well, you're so welcome. Dan, final words? Quick smile, The when, when we do the wave, which I haven't missed a wave yet, and a lot of the alums show up and a bunch of them will come up and say, are you still there? I go, yes. And then others come up and say, are you, you're still alive? And I go, yeah, and shut up. I, <laughs> I always think that's funny when they ask me, you haven't croaked yet? No, not yet, not even close. I love it. Uh, you're going to outlive them, but don't say that to them, please. Don't no. say that to them. All right, well, listen, I want to thank both of you. It's been a great evening. This is our third evening, and we got to the faculty, and, and it's just beautiful. Tomorrow night, we've got the first class people that you know, you know, from Claudia to Joe and Carol Ball to other folks who will be with us tomorrow night. Uh, if you're tuning in, come back tomorrow night, because this is going to be like the, uh, the climax as far as talking to people who started at Pacific States and then went through with Life West, and they're part of Jerry's kids, and um, their journeys were all different, all incredible. Uh, uh, you know, and it's just amazing uh, to, to have them back with us for our 40 year. Uh, lastly, uh, just know that we're going to be celebrating our 40 year from here on out, um, you know, throughout the year. We got to December 31st. The wave, will, as Dan mentioned, will be off the hook uh, around our 40th and everything else we'll be doing. It will be on campus. 
Uh, so make sure that you make have your plans to come there. Uh, tune into us as we move forward and just know that we love and appreciate you and live your life from lasting purpose, giving, doing, loving, and serving from your own abundance, expecting nothing in return. So uh, until tomorrow night, for Sue and for Dan, we wanna say thank you for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night. The Wave has been so inspiring to me. I am just so jazzed to come here every year, always going home, just energized and so excited about chiropractic. And I just wanna get my hands on people already. They did good last year, but they surpassed themselves this year. You have got to come. I love the wave. It's been a great seminar, meeting up with old friends and catching up and learning a lot and being re-inspired. <laughs>